Oh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I just had my coffee. Oh. <laughs> you guys seem very awake. Does everybody have lots of questions for Brooke? I'm going to say throw your hands up right away. David will come and find you, and we'll cut back and forth. We'll make it as interactive as possible. I'm going to go first. Do you know everyone here? I feel like I do. Okay. I feel like I do. We, we've built a friendship. Um, how are you doing today? Is it your first time in the UK? How's Manchester been treating you? It is not my first time in the UK, but my first time here, and I just found out my people are from here. Your people? You know, like the DNA thing. Okay. The ancestry. Ah. Yes. So. Specifically here. Yeah, this there was quite a few in Manchester. Manchester? Yeah. Oh, look at I that. I guess I'm one of you. We're, I mean, we've got loads of questions. We've made, it's for the love of horror, so I'm guessing the majority of the questions are going to be about yeah. Silence of the Lambs, yeah. which is probably the most critically acclaimed horror film ever. Um, how old were you when you were in? You were, you've got to be young. I think I was 23. Yeah. Yeah. And that was... Uh, I mean, I'm 57. I'm not great at math, but <laughs> it's a long time ago. How did you end up getting involved in Silence of the Lambs? What was... Because obviously it's a, it's a big movie. Did you know at the time going into it it was going to be a big, a big deal? I feel like I did, just because everything came together. You know, the, the script has to be great. The director was amazing, and the cast was amazing. So I thought we had a good shot. Yeah, absolutely. And most people probably don't realize it was like a sequel to Manhunter. It was the second where they recast everybody. Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, Brian Cox Brian played Cox. Lecter. Yeah. Controversial. Guy, you guys know this, I'm sure. Every day is a school day. Um, and then you came in as Catherine Martin. And I had just like gotten skinny because I was an actress and I was young and I thought, and I did have to be thin. You yeah. had to be thin. And of course, my first part, I had to gain 25 pounds. That was fun. And that was part of the, you've got the job, put the weight on. I was supposed to be naked, too. Wow. And I thought, my God, I'm single. Like, <laughs> gain 25 pounds and be naked. Okay, it's over. <laughs> We've got you a job. What is it? You need to put weight on and take your clothes off. Essentially, that's the job description. Okay. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, who's got the first question in the crowd? David. Hello. Hello. You're yeah. David. No, no. No. Michael. Sorry. That's David. David, yeah. I thought he knew everybody here. I was like, what? Just yeah. pretend I do. <laughs> Hello. Um, my question is, if you could have written Catherine Martin into Hannibal, the sequel, how would you have done it? It's tricky because I never saw Hannibal, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, I think I would have probably made her be either a therapist. <laughs> Was there a therapist in that? I don't know. Uh, or maybe she was a CIA agent. You know, like she faced her fears or, you know, exactly, yeah. Most of your work on Silence of the Lambs was with Ted Levine, or is Ted Levine, is Ted Levine, is it? Ted Levine. Who on screen is incredibly intimidating and he's got this rich, deep voice. Was he okay off stage, or did he stay in... Was he a sweetheart? I want to think that he was. He is. To me, he's a sweetheart. I think he does intimidate people. I can, I can see, because he's very intense. Yes, he is. Um, it's funny, because I haven't heard from him in a long time, and he called me, like, I don't know, a month ago. You know, we're having this election, and uh, I guess Pennsylvania is an important state, and that's where we shot the movie. So he was sort of saying, we should do this thing where we say, you know, Lecter isn't a real person, because apparently Trump thinks that he is. So, you know, we just thought we'd do like a PSA. You know. hang, hang on, let's just rewind that a second. Don Donald Trump thought Hannibal Lecter was a real person. Oh yeah, he talks about him all the time. He was a great guy. He was an amazing doctor. Huge. Um, I, I mean... I, I mean, sorry. It's just going to kill the room to even bring that guy up. No, so. listen, listen. I mean, I think this crowd is okay with me going off on strange tangents. Yeah, but I've been doing it long enough. Um, David, hello. There's Front David. Row. Just order him. Right? If you see someone with a hand up, just send David. He'll do it. He'll do it. Hello. 
<laughs> First of all, thank you for being with us. Really okay. appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Um, second, my question is going to completely jump forward. Grotesquerie. What the hell? <laughs> That's it. You tell me. I'm in it. I have no idea what's happening. Like, seriously, how many have you seen? All of them? Oh, you're ahead of me. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I have no idea what's going on. Um, seriously. And, you know, there was a day when I, I did a lot of costume fittings. I don't know why. And, and I said, hey, I'm doing this scene on Tuesday. Who's playing the nurse? And they were like, we can't tell you. And I was like, I'm going to meet him on Tuesday and work with him all day. So maybe you should tell me. Like, what if it's my ex-husband or something, you know? Oh. Um, and it was Travis Kelsey. As in... Do you guys know who that is? Yeah. The football guy? Yeah. Is he, is he Taylor Swift? No, he's not Taylor Swift. He's Taylor Swift's boyfriend, yeah. Yeah. And a, a football player. I mean, you, not... What do you guys call football? Amer American football. Are both football? We Soccer have, we have, and... We, yeah, we have football and then um, we call yours American football. Oh, American. Because you don't have American football. I mean, not really, no. We have like a small... Okay. It's not like... It's not like with you guys and it's okay. the thing. But, oh my God, Manchester United is like such a thing. I mean, I, I kind of avoid sports, but you cannot avoid that. It's like impossible. Okay, sorry. I'm going insane. Uh... I don't really know what's happening. There's like a real world and a not real world. And I never really found out who I was in the real world. I don't know. So this is the new show from yes. the guy who did American Horror Story? Yeah, Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy. That's what I was thinking, yeah. And scary. It's so scary. The second page. I was like, oh my God, I can't see this. Yeah, really. Oh, thank you. And Niecy Nash is pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I've never seen much American Horror Story, so when I saw Grotesquerie on Disney Plus, isn't it over there? I didn't click on, but I thought the poster was cool. But now I feel like I've got to, I've got to, I like weird stuff. So weird. That's what I mean. I'm a, I appreciate weirdness. You like weird. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate the weird. They know. They know what they are. Check it out then. Yes, I will. David, hello. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Hi, you okay? Um, I just wondered, going back to Silence of the Lambs, I just wondered if you'd ever read the book before you did it, because um, Catherine Martin wasn't really much of a fleshed out character, and you really brought her to life, so um, I just wondered if you took any inspiration from the book. Oh, wow. Um, I did read the book, and I really wanted this part, you know? And I had seen Red Dragon, or Mindhunter, you know? Um, I, you know, I should reread it because I was wondering recently if the things I remember were actually. When? How long ago did you read it? Ooh. Yeah, like I feel like. Can you remember if this was real? That she was stoned with her boyfriend. She was. It was real. She was like smoking pot with her boyfriend and like left the potato chips or something in the car and went to get them, and was kidnapped and thrown in a well. And I thought, wow, that, that sucks. They, no, they, cha they changed it for the film. Even. Yeah, that didn't happen in the movie. But I remember in the movie thinking, you know, what's the most inconvenient time you could be kidnapped? Like, okay, you probably have your period. <laughs> you know? Um... Maybe you wear contact lenses and they've dried out oh. and you can't see, you know. That's the worst. I mean. You could, you could be down a well with lotion, but if you can't see. I mean. And Buffalo Bill is not going to give you any saline solution, is he? He's, no. He's a no. bit of a dick. And I don't even think he left the lights on, you know, <laughs> when he left the room. So, yeah. Uh, but thank you for saying it was fleshed out. I just think she was so cool because I used to watch horror movies and, like, always someone would be running and then they'd fall and you'd be like, come on, get up, you know? But with her, she did all the things you would want to do. Yeah, it wasn't like running up the stairs instead of the front door, she was... She's like, get me the fuck out of here yeah, right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah. The, the kidnap scene in the movie, he's pretending to have a broken arm and wants to carry the thing in the back of the car. That was what 
correct me if I'm wrong, that's what uh, Ted Bundy used to do. And they made it, they put that into the film. That was like a real thing. It was. That's worse. It's, it is. Yes, it is. Silence of the Lambs, for all the Anthony Hopkins scene, chewing, scenery chewing and the over-the-top performance, the rest of the film is a really seriously gnarly movie. Like, everything's realistic. The autopsies, the, uh, the moths, and everything with you... It's un- uncomfortably realistic, I think, even, even looking back. I don't think I could do it again. No. <laughs> and I think, obviously, doing it when you're young and carefree is different to doing it when you're older and things terrify you because you've, you've got an experienced life. Yeah, maybe that's it. I don't know. Yeah. Because I used to be wild when I was younger, and I look at some of the stuff I used to do, not a chance. Yeah. I'm old now. I'm sensible. I don't do tequila shots on stage at all. We did, last night got heavy. What's that? Last night we were, yeah, it was, we were drinking last night. Oh, me? Yeah, oh no, me. You, you were, I was, but I was in Madrid. You were in Madrid last oh, night? Oh my God, yes. Let's talk about Madrid, how was that? It was great, but at two o'clock in the morning, yeah. I was like, no, I'm not going to the club. I am not going to the club. I'm going to bed. You, you chose bed over club? Yes, and I thought two was pretty good. Come two on. Two was quite late. I think if, you, if you're going home at two, you don't really need to have gone to the club. You've done enough damage. Thank you. Absolutely. Did you guys know tapas are free? In Spain? No one told me this. It's just there. Like, in the bars, you buy a drink, and tapas is the food that comes free with like, it. Like bar nuts and crisps for us. Yeah, but delicious. Like delicious. If you go to the right place. Oh. Yeah. Go for a pint, get some free patatas bravas. And what's the little meat things, what, you know? Yeah, the little Spanish meatballs. Oh, I wish I'd gone with you last night. I know. Ah. Although, Ryan Air, you guys. Woo! Rough. I don't think I'm doing Ryan Air again. It's th- my second time, and no. I think, I think their whole gimmick is that they're rough. Even the guy at Customs in Manchester said, he was like, it's the worst. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. The Ryan Air guy was looking at putting standing sections on planes to fit more people on. No. To bring the price down. Down below $30? Yeah. Okay. He's like, if I can fit more people on, less luggage, all your fares cheaper. Do you guys want to hear about Ryanair? <laughs> she looks quite interested, to be fair. Really? Okay. We have got. We must have more questions. Come on. Throw it. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, somebody there first. Hey. Um, I was... You kind of cut into Spain, and I was going to ask you, can you talk about your Spanish trip in your um, gallery um, and what inspired you to take photographs? Oh, yeah, good question. Um, so bef- right before Silence of the Lambs, I was part of the New York hardcore punk scene. And, um, and I took photographs because I was too scared to be a singer. I wanted to be a singer, but I was very fat and sad and... Uh, insecure. So it was easier for me to take pictures, but I could still get right into the center of the action. Um, So yeah, I just had a show in a gallery in Madrid. It's totally insane. When I say that, I'm like, what the fuck? Um, And I'm currently, when I go back to the States, I'm going to pitch a series that I've written based, you know, set in that time with all the, the girls. It's all the girls. The, in the New York hardcore punk scene. Yeah, because there was a bunch of us. It's a book I have. I only have two copies here, but um, it's a photo book of it's photos I took when I was 17, 18 years old at CBGBs. What, and what bands are we talking about? Bad Brains, Chromags, wow. Agnostic Front. Yeah, wow. that's why I asked about your Fred yeah, Perry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I was in a hardcore punk band back in the day. Stop but, it! Yeah, and then I grew a fringe and joined an emo band and was fat and sad, so I get that as well. Um, that's wild. Is there a reason, obviously, did you play any instruments? Did you want to be? I played bass. I felt like that was the easiest. Sorry, no offense to did the Did we just bass become players. best friends? Really? I'm a bass player. Because guitar is hard. Yeah, there's it's six... like my fingers I don't didn't want six strings. There. It's a lot. I don't do chords. It's a lot. Bum, 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 bum. Dead easy. Look at this. We can't do a band with two bass players, though. That's the only problem. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Trailblazers. Yeah. Um, We've got a question down the front. Hello. So. (laughs) Hi there. Super fan here. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm so pleased to see you. I love your overalls. What's on them? Oh, thank you. Uh, they're little ghosts Aww. doing uh, daily chores. So oh. ironing and hanging out with the cat and stuff. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I wanted to ask about uh, Bates Motel, whether you had any reservations about... Uh, yeah. I didn't realise I'd done that. That's good, that was good. <laughs> hey! um, yeah, so uh, I'm wondering if you had any reservations about uh, doing it, with it being based upon such a, an iconic horror film, and um, just kind of how you approached it and how it went, things like that. I mean, I never watched it because I thought, why on earth would you make a show about Psycho or like a prequel or whatever? I just didn't, I thought it was a bad idea. And then I watched it. Oh my God, it's such a great show. And so I would, I would have done anything on that show. And of course I come in the end and then it ended. And I was like, what? Yeah. I mean, come on. And Freddie Highmore is so impressive. Holy sheesh, gabibble. He, while he was shooting that show, he graduated from Cambridge. He's fluent in Arabic and Spanish. He, he directed the episode where I'm interrogating him. He directed it and wrote it and was starring in it. I was like, what is going on? Wow. Yeah, he's pretty amazing. He's very cool, isn't he? I'm, st I'm still buzzing off your reservations joke. I really am. Um, She's here all week. Correct me if I'm wrong, and someone probably will. Ed, Psycho was inspired by Ed Gein, as was Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs. That's correct. So did you look into any real-life serial killers when you were doing your research or preparing for Silence of the Lambs? I didn't. I know Ted did. Oh, I can imagine he did. And I remember he told me that he went to Langley, you know. Um, I guess true. through the film, they yeah. let him go look at... I guess they have a room there where you can go and yeah. research things. And he said that he had this little notebook where he was keeping notes... Um, and I'm sure they were probably disturbing notes, <laughs> like with drawings and stuff. And he said he got up to leave and he remembered, oh my God, I forgot my book. And he went back and it was gone. And he said, no, I just left my notebook here. And they were like, what notebook? And I remember he said, it went right into my file. <laughs> you know, like, they were just like, okay. Um, On the off chance that he's going to become a serial killer. Then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a strange question to ask here, but what is the obsession with serial killers? There's definitely going to be some true crime podcast aficionado weirdos in this crowd. You look the type, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's outing the crowd. Uh, am I right? I was right. Is it because we're all capable of that? That's what it is, yes. right? Speak for yourself. I don't, think, I don't think I've got it in me. That means he's worse than I am. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm in the right demographic, to be fair. It must be that, right? Just that we don't like to think of the... Everything has a light and a dark side. Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. I think we've got about five minutes left or so. Oh, I thought we were going to sit here all day. I could. Okay, I would, let's, uh, do yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We can play... We can have a band. Oh. Do we know any drummers? Two bass players. Two bass players and a drummer? So, David, you got a question? Sorry, it's me again. <laughs> um, can you talk about a, bit, a bit about your time on Grey's Anatomy and when you took the role as Erica Hahn, did you realise what impact your character would have for the LGBT community seeing someone else on screen that people could relate to? I think, well, when I took the role, they weren't, she wasn't going to be gay. And then... Um, they sort of asked me if I'd be okay with that. It was a while ago, you guys, and this was like not being done. Um, and I was fired, and I still don't know why. Like, no one ever told me why I was fired. It was very sudden. Um, so aside from that, <laughs> I mean, I thought it was great. I thought, I felt like um, maybe I jinxed it because I kept thinking it was like a coup. Like, I was like, why am I with the popular kids, you know? because it was such a huge hit, you know? Um, yeah, it was a... But how nice the fans were. They were so nice. And I did come to realize what it meant, you know? Um, so, yeah. Oh, look at that. He's, he's, he's impatient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
is. He's like, I gotta get up there. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Um, also, I'm really shocked that we've gone half an hour into a Q&A with you. Nobody has mentioned lotion on the skin, and nobody's asked about the dog. Oh, my God. She's like a legend. Darla. I did a thing, also horrifying, called Them. Did you guys have that here? It's, it's, it's very scary. Them. Them. Anyway, there was a dog in it, and the trainer was like, oh, my God, tell me about Darla. You know. She was in so many movies. Like a dog icon. Yes, yeah, she was in uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Uh, um, and there was something else she was in. Yeah, she worked, I used to say, she worked way more than me. She was like, yeah. <laughs> celebrity dog? Yeah. You don't see so much of that anymore. There's not like celebrity not dogs. Not like Lassie. No. And it, maybe it's time. We're bringing it back. We need to bring it back. Um, we've got one question at the back. Hi, lovely to uh, see you. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, so it's a bit of a weird one. You obviously started in Silence of the Lambs when you were quite young. And then like throughout your time as an actress, you've done a, a variety of different roles. Would you ever be interested in doing like a, like a main character in like a horror film or series again in the future? Of course, yeah. I mean, it's changing, or maybe I'm changing, I don't know. It, it feels, uh, there's been a sort of corporatization of everything, and it feels like people are in their own lanes. Like, you know, there's less collaboration. Like, Silence of the Lambs, he hired us all, and we all felt like, we wanted to make him proud, you know? Like, we were the best ones for... He hired the people that he thought were the best at what they did. Jonathan, them. Yes. And then let them do what they do. Now there's, like, people that I'll never meet who have a say in what I'm wearing and... You know what I mean? You get these notes, like, stay in your trailer until you get the A-OK -okay from whoever these people are. I don't know. Um, okay, I veered off from the question, clearly. But yes, of course I would. Did you see a movie called Series 7, The Contenders? You should see that. It's on YouTube. I never got a single residual, but you should see that. That's a great one. Um, the Hunger Games ripped us off. Yeah, yeah. Like, 100%. It was like a reality show, battle royale type of yes. deal. God, wow, I had that on DVD. It's, oh, you do? It was like That's very rare. Six or something that came I out? mean, yeah. 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 I've got it in my attic. Do you, did you see it? Or yeah. you just well, have the DVD? I saw it at the time, yeah. Okay. I've ne I've never, I buy things, I watch yeah. them, and then I hoard them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm one of no, those. No, that's a great character. Sort of related to Catherine, too. A real badass, and yeah. Wow. I, yeah. I completely forgot. There's films that you watch, that, well, you were in it, so you're not going to forget it, but there's films that you watch that sort of pop at the time and then disappear, and you wonder why they never stayed. Like, Silence of the Lambs came out and stayed in the cultural psyche. Is it disappointing when you do a film like Series 7 that's so good and then... Oh my God, it's the worst. Yeah. And because we went to Sundance and it was a big hit yeah. and there was a bidding war and then they just didn't know how to market it. We were ahead of our time. Yeah. Yeah, genuinely. But going back to Silence of the Lambs, that was bang on for the time. It captured a moment. It captured the feeling. Um, and it looks beautiful. Is that... Do you, do you find that you're able to go back and watch it? Yeah. You can't not watch no. it when it's on, right? It's a it just sucks you right film. in. It's funny because my youngest daughter is 17 and she loves horror movies and she hasn't seen Silence of the Lambs. And I'm like, dude, it's pretty good. It's like, you should check it out. And she's like, I don't want to see you suffering, mom. No. And I thought, I get, okay, I, I sort of get that. Sort of get that. Did you see Long Legs this year? That's very... I heard it's good. It is, but it's very Silence of the Lambs. How so? It, young female FBI agents investigating murders. It's very... I mean, it's not identical, but you can see they've taken a lot from it, the look and the aesthetic. and. You can see a lot of things do that. Yes. I just did a, a show. It's a new show. I just shot it in Vancouver. I was thinking how when I got um, kidnapped in Silence of the Lambs, how scary that was. I get kidnapped in this one, too, and I thought, oh, come on. This is not scary. No. This is, every time this guy grabbed me, I was like, come on. 
Come on. I've been bundled into a van by Buffalo Bill. Nothing. Let's try me. a little harder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, we got we we are running out of time. If anyone wants to ask one question, now is your time. Oh, there we go. Hello. All right. Hi, Brooke. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, when you stop shooting your roles and your performances in Silence of the Lambs, what, what was Ted Levine like when he was out of character? I mean, what was his true self like? I love Ted, yeah. but like I said, he does intimidate people, and yeah. I, I think he was right because he knew that people were going to always associate him with that role, you know? Uh -huh. um, we hung out a lot, uh, and I think there's like a thing where, because Jodie Foster had just done The Accused, and she had that horrible rape scene in The Accused, and she uh -huh. said she kind of overcompensated by hanging out with those guys, you know, because right. you just feel so icky about it. Yeah. So it was like weirdly intimate to be, it's a weird ass job, you guys, to be an actor. And like to all of a sudden be in a pit with this guy and yeah. doing this, you know, it was very uh -huh. intense. So we hung out all the time when we weren't shooting. Um, so does he have a soft side then? Oh, yeah. yeah. And when I went to Sundance with Series 7, the director is one of my best friends, and he's gay, and he was like, what does it mean that I'm attracted to Ted? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it means you have good taste. Like, it's okay. He's fantastic, you know? Cute. We've seen him dance to Goodbye Horses. Oh, I mean, I know, so you know? It's appealing. Um, and on that bombshell, I think that is our... Uh, yeah, uh, that right. is it's our a good time. bomb. It's good. Who knows what I'll say next? No. Better get me out of here. <laughs> guys, please give it up one more time for the amazing Brooke Smith. Thanks, you guys. Have a great weekend.